Wrath PvP is full of things that are so weird that it's hard to tell if something is a glitch or is working as intended, like this warrior using Shatter while hexed. If you think you know a lot about the game, this video will put your knowledge to the test. Quickly, what are the differences between these two abilities? Trust us, it's more complicated than you think. And do you know what the combat timer is? Does it take 6 seconds to drop like it does in Shadowlands? Apparently not. Oh yeah, and there is something in common between these three passes. Do you know what it is? Today, we're going to be teaching you things you might not know about Wrath Classic PvP. We will start with what might be the most obvious interactions, then gradually build towards the things that make you say, what the f***? And by the end of it, you will come out a better and smarter player. Anyway, as promised, let's start off with some slightly uncommon knowledge related to diminishing returns. We will begin with an easy question. Out of all these spells, which ones are on the same DR? Cheap Shot, Kidney Shot, and Psychic Horror. Well, actually, none of these things share DRs, despite having very similar effects. Cheap Shot is probably the least intuitive spell here, because it is on its own unique DR category, which means it will DR with itself, but not with something like Hammer of Justice. It might be a bit more intuitive to see how Psychic Horror isn't on the Cheap Shot or Stun DR, which is unlike Retail, where it actually is on the same DR as Stuns. There is also this guy here, Stone Claw Totem, but what does this have to do with DRs? Well, if you hit the Totem, you will actually be stunned for a few seconds, but why would you want to do that? Well, it's because it will put you on Stun DR, which can be quite useful into a comp like LSP, where you can preemptively DR yourself for Hammer of Justice or Shadow Fury. You could do this while nothing is really going on to make you more annoying for the enemy team to lock down. The other major example of weird DR categories is Fear, Cyclone, and Blind. In the retail game, these are all on the same DR, but in Classic, Cyclone is its own unique category, which means someone can get fully feared into a full duration Cyclone. This is pretty useful to understand, since LSD in 3v3 and Lockjord in 2v2 are quite popular setups. And speaking of Warlock, the silence effect from UA is unique since it doesn't DR with any other silence in the game, so don't expect to pre-DR yourself as a healer against shadow play, because at that point you were just outplaying yourself. Honestly, we could probably do an entire video on DRs, so let us know in the comments below if this is something you'd like to see. Maybe you knew a thing or two about DRs, but let's test your knowledge on Absorbs, which is where things get funky. There are a few classes in the game with Absorbs, and the main ones you should already know about include Priests, Paladins, and Mages. What you probably didn't know is that some procs will simply not work into targets affected by shields. The infamous Taste for Blood procs that get generated by Rend ticks will just not happen if the Rend gets fully absorbed. This means if you're playing a Priest and you see a Rend ticking on you or your partner, simply shielding them will deny a huge portion of the Warrior's damage and utility since it will mean less procs and therefore fewer uses of unrelenting assault. This type of interaction also matters for Ret Paladins, who have a significant part of their mana tied into Judgments of the Wise procs, which get activated every time Judgment is used. But when the Judgment gets fully absorbed, the buff will not trigger, meaning if you really wanted to screw over a Ret Paladin's mana bar, you could try shielding right before Judgment. And of course, if you play Ret Paladin, be aware of any absorption effects on the target, as judging repeatedly into shields will run you oom um quite quickly. Unholy DKs have a very similar interaction with Unholy Blight. Normally Death Coil will be used to apply this buff to prevent all diseases from being dispelled, but just like the other effects we mentioned, this will not happen if the Death Coil is fully absorbed. Finally, some trinket effects will only proc when abilities deal damage, which means they won't proc when the damage is fully absorbed. This might not be something you will actively play around, but is useful to know if you're wondering why the ICD of your trinket seems longer than normal. All right, quick break. We need an intermission. Hey, look at this dancing gnome for a second. Okay, never mind. That's kind of weird. This might be a lot of game knowledge, but trust us, things are about to get really strange. But hey, doesn't knowing all this stuff make you feel smarter? With Wrath still being relatively new to a lot of people, having a ton of game knowledge is a massive advantage. That's why we developed our Knowing Your Enemy courses, which can be found exclusively at skillcap.com. There you will find detailed guides on how to beat the most oppressive specs in the game, which means less losing to the things you hate to fight. Our Knowing Your Enemy course pairs perfectly with our class guides, which teach you the same damage rotations and playstyles of the best players. Our guides are proven to work, which is why we even include a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. So what are you waiting for? Get ahead of the competition today and check out Skillcap using the discount link below. Anyway, back to the video. Now it's time to move on to the game knowledge that is a bit more weird, starting with disarms. First of all, there are four major disarm abilities in Arena, being, well, disarm for one, but also dismantle, psychic horror, and chimera shot. 
There are a few subtle differences between all of these, which we will cover in a second. And in case you didn't know, unlike Retail WoW, disarm effects cannot be removed with a PvP trinket. Maybe this is obvious to you, but the differences between each of these effects might surprise you. First up, all of these disarm effects will at least remove the current main hand weapon, which includes two handers. Disarm, Dismantle, and Psychic Horror will also remove the ranged weapon, but not Chimera Shot. And out of all of these, Dismantle is the only one that removes the offhand slot completely, which even includes shields. And finally, except for Chimera, all of these disarms can be removed by Hand of Protection, which is a pretty common strategy in Arena. Oddly enough, Cloak of Shadows can be used to remove Chimera Disarm, but not the other ones. If you think this is weird, we're just getting started. Now you know how these effects work, so let's cover why these differences matter. Hunters wearing a two-handed weapon will not be able to deterrence if they are disarmed by any of these effects, since it requires that they are able to parry. But if the hunter was equipping two one-handed weapons while disarmed, then they will be able to deterrence since they still have a weapon in the offhand. But if the hunter was dismantled, they won't be able to debt at all since it removes every weapon slot. Something similar happens with warriors and any of their spells that require a shield. They will still be able to use shield wall or shield block while disarmed by shadow priests, hunters, or other warriors, but will not be able to use these abilities while dismantled, once again since it removes the offhand, which includes the shield. Also on the topic of prot warriors, you might occasionally see them disarming enemy casters, but why? No, it's not because they lose spell power, it is because of a talent called Improved Disarm, which increases damage dealt to the target by 10% from all sources, and since no wizard will ever be wearing a weapon chain in Arena, this means they will take 10% more damage from the entire enemy team for 10 seconds. Pretty brutal into the likes of ATC and Prot Thundercleave when they become more meta. Moving along, we have another slightly uncommon interaction that is super useful to know, snapshotting. Again, if you are a super smart viewer, you probably know how this works. But in Wrath, all damage and healing over time effects will snapshot their throughput values based on the buffs that were active when they were applied. But what does that actually mean for your gameplay? Well, pretend you're playing Shadow Priest and you manage to get a full row of dots on a target. You're probably pretty happy, right? But what happens if your trinket procs immediately after? Will the extra spell power from something like Flow of Knowledge affect the damage of your dots already on the target? The answer is no. This is because of snapshotting. If you wanted to take advantage of the bonus damage from your trinket buff, you would need to reapply dots to any affected target. While this might be slightly annoying, it does allow you to more precisely min-max your damage as a dot class or your healing as a resto druid. If you have a trinket buff active and it's about to fade, you could simply reapply your dots and hots before it expires and their damage or healing will be amplified even after the proc goes away. Kind of neat. Also, there's no pandemic mechanic in Wrath, but what the hell does that mean? Pandemic was a warlock passive introduced in MOP that would eventually find its way into every single damage and healing over time effect in the game. You probably know that refreshing a dot or hot in Shadowlands will add on some bonus duration, but in Wrath, this doesn't happen. What this means is that if you want to be super efficient, you should make sure your dots or hots tick for as much as their full duration as possible, since refreshing them early won't really do anything useful. Alright, we're almost to the weirdest stuff of all, but quickly, we need to talk about the combat timer. We promise to be fast with this one. Okay, so, combat. In Shadowlands, dropping combat takes 6 seconds of zero interaction. In Wrath, it takes, well, it depends. See, the combat timer is dynamic and can range anywhere from about 5 to 7 seconds. This mostly matters while playing against rogues. If you don't have passive stun reduction, the rogue can sap you off of Kidney, Hodge, or Cyclone quite easily, which is a common 2v2 strategy into Feral Priest, so watch out, druids. Finally, for our last oddities, we have some bizarre interactions with cooldowns. Remember when we talked about deterrence earlier? Again, it technically causes the hunter to parry, which leads to a bunch of consequences. The biggest annoyance is that cheap shot can be used straight through it, since it cannot be parried, but this also means ambush and backstab will go through as well, since they attack from behind, and parries will not work on enemies that are at your back. Which is why Shred goes through as well, since it has a positional requirement where the Feral needs to be behind the target. And warriors playing with the Overpower Glyph can absolutely shred through deterrence since they can effectively spam Overpower every global while it is active. But worst of all, there's one spell that completely goes through deterrence, but is probably not something you expected. 
Chaos Bolt. That's right, one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game goes through a major defensive cooldown. But wait, that's not all, because Chaos Bolt is actually way better than you think. Read the tooltip, Chaos Bolt cannot be resisted and pierces through all absorption effects. This means it goes completely through shields, like from priests, paladins, and mages to name a few, but this is only the tip of the iceberg. No, because it also goes through Cloak of Shadows, because it cannot be resisted. And surprisingly, this means it also goes through Cheat Death itself. Yes, rogues can die through Cheat Death to Chaos Bolt even if they have Cloak of Shadows active. Who knows how many of these interactions were actually intended. Maybe some were by design, while others might have been complete oversights, but knowing Blizzard, we are sure these must be intended, and there is absolutely no way they are just bugs. In any case, these pieces of game knowledge are just one of the many things we teach at skillcap.com. If you're serious about improving an arena, our Knowing Your Enemy course is one of the best places to start. We break down the most oppressive meta specs and teach you some of the micro interactions that most players don't even know about. With an expanding library of hundreds of videos, Skillcap Capped has something for you, and with a money-back guarantee, we are confident in your ability to see huge rating games this season. So what are you waiting for? Visit the discount link below to get started. Anyway guys, we hope you learned something from this one, and feel free to share some of the weird things you know about Wrath PvP. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, see you soon.